In the 1880s, a mind-blowing discovery was made in Russia. A strange spiral of teeth. Something like a buzzsaw came out of the earth. Little did everyone know, it belonged to a creature so bizarre, it could be mistaken for a mutant from a horror movie. This was the Helicoprion, the deadliest prehistoric shark ever. Those teeth coiled into a spiral of sharp triangles. How did such a strange jaw work? And how on earth did the shark wield such an unusual weapon? The curse of the buzzsaw came swirling in the oceans 275 million years ago, harboring one of the era's apex predators. Helicoprion was a member of a genus of saw-toothed cartilaginous fish known as edestoids. The name edestoids comes from the Greek word edesti, meaning to devour. These fish were common in the world's oceans from the Devonian to the early Triassic period, long before the dinosaurs appeared. This mysterious fossil fish is known for one unique feature, a lower jaw transformed into a spiral of teeth, preserved in fossils in circular walls. Its name, Spiral Saw, comes from these distinctive tooth formations. Because Helicoprion had a cartilaginous skeleton that decays quickly after death, scientists have limited information about its body. It likely had a streamlined, torpedo-like shape. Similar to modern sharks and other open-water fish, Helicoprion would grow to an impressive size, reaching about 20 to 25 feet long and weighing up to 1,000 pounds or 453 kilograms, similar to today's basking sharks. To put this into perspective, that's roughly the size of a large school bus or a small yacht. This makes Helicoprion one of the largest known cartilaginous creatures ever. This fish was characterized by a single large dorsal fin and a forked caudal fin. Interestingly, they lacked pelvic and anal fins, giving them a streamlined appearance in the water. Of course, the most striking feature of Helicoprion was its tooth walls. These consisted of dozens of teeth arranged in a single spiral-shaped tooth root. The teeth at the center of the spiral were the youngest and had a hooked shape, while those towards the outer edge were older and triangular. Now, how did it use this strange jaw? Unlike other sharks, Helicoprion's mouth angle was wider, accommodating a jagged spiral of teeth that protruded from its lower jaw. Sadly, these teeth weren't just for show. They pushed prey deep into its mouth, where a notch in the upper jaw sliced through flesh. Helicoprion was colossal, twice the length of a great white shark, yet it had fewer fins and a sleeker body. Its teeth, each four inches long and angled backwards, formed a deadly array. New teeth continuously pushed older ones deeper into the whirling rotations of its jaw. Juveniles had two rotations of teeth, while adults boasted four, creating a fearsome mechanism for tearing flesh. Over 150 fossils have been unearthed, yet the odd shape of Helicoprion's jaw confused scientists for well over a century. Nevertheless, this unique arrangement of teeth was an adaptation that allowed Helicoprion to efficiently feed on prey with soft bodies. What did Helicoprion eat? It probably went for squids. Some think it used suction to pull in its meals, while others believe it bit into them directly. The teeth at the front likely hooked and dragged prey, the middle ones cut and pierced, and the back teeth sliced food into smaller pieces for swallowing. Another theory proposes Helicoprion feasted on hard-shelled creatures such as ammonoids. Here, its teeth would have crushed shells before the softer insides were sucked into its mouth. Studies reveal Helicoprion had a powerful bite force, estimated between 270 to 540 pounds. That's similar to one of the deadliest dog breeds out there, like the Doggo Canario, which is banned in several countries for being too dangerous. On top of that fierce bite force, Helicoprion's ability to adapt and thrive across diverse oceanic environments is just another thing that made it a top predator of its time. It thrived from the early Permian period about 290 million years ago to the early Triassic period, approximately 250 million years ago. Fossils discovered across Australia, Asia, Europe, and America indicate Helicoprion inhabited oceans worldwide during the Permian. More than half of its fossils came from Idaho, with another quarter found in the Ural Mountains of Russia. Scientists suggest it likely lived near the southwestern coast of the supercontinent Gondwana and later on Pangaea, due to the widespread distribution of its fossils. Remarkably, Helicoprion survived the Permian-Triassic extinction event, 
one of the Earth's most catastrophic extinctions, which wiped out 90% of marine species and 70% of land species. That raises the question, if that couldn't wipe it out, then what did? Stay tuned, because we'll reveal that shortly. Now, was there any braver creature in the ocean that dared to take on this mighty beast? Well, as you can probably imagine, given its 360-degree spiral teeth and impressive size, this fish faced few natural enemies or threats. Its formidable presence and specialized dentition likely allowed it to dominate its ecosystem without significant competition from other predators. The first and oldest fossil of Helicoprion was discovered in the 19th century. Initially, a fragment of a tooth whorl consisting of 15 teeth was found on a tributary of the Gascoigne River in Western Australia. Early studies mistakenly classified this fossil under the Adestus genus. However, Alexander Karpinski corrected this in 1899 by naming the species H. bessonoi and reassigning the fossil to the Helicoprion genus. Many similar fossils have since been unearthed in Australia. Helicoprion fossils have been found in various parts of the world, including Russia, Japan, and more recently, the Gufa Mountains in China. In Eurasia, discoveries date back to the early 1970s, with findings in Pakistan in the late 70s, Indochina in 1933, and Iran in 1978. In Mexico, fossil deposits were located in the northern states of Coahuila and Chihuahua in the mid-1940s and early 1960s, respectively. A major discovery occurred in March 2000 in Puebla, Mexico, marking the southernmost finding of Helicoprion in the Western Hemisphere. Most of these discoveries consist of tooth whorls. The scarcity of complete fossil evidence has prompted researchers to use advanced visual reconstructions to hypothesize the practical use of tooth whorls and the possible body structure of this ancient fish. Now, while it looks like a shark and has a cartilaginous skeleton, Helicoprion isn't related to modern sharks or part of their evolutionary line. Instead, it belongs to a different group called holocephaly, or euchondrocephaly, which evolved separately from sharks. The relationship between Helicoprion and its relatives is understood through their unique tooth whorls. These spiral-shaped teeth have led to various ideas about how they evolved and what they were used for. Similar tooth whorls are found in related fish like Adestus, which use them to slash prey. Helicoprion and many prehistoric euchondrocephalans share a jaw structure called autodiastolic, which is not seen in modern animals, except in embryonic chimeriforms, their closest living relatives. This special jaw structure gives clues about the ancient lineage and special adaptations of Helicoprion and its relatives in ancient oceans. Now on to its extinction. Part of what makes Helicoprion such an exotic creature is its longevity. It existed from the early Permian period around 290 million years ago to the early Triassic 250 million years ago. During this time, while sharks were just beginning to establish themselves in the undersea food chain, Helicoprion thrived alongside other formidable marine predators, including marine reptiles. Remarkably, fossil specimens from the early Triassic reveal that Helicoprion survived the Permian-Triassic extinction event. This event, known as the Great Dying, saw the demise of approximately 96% of marine species. Scientists attribute this mass extinction to a series of colossal volcanic eruptions in the Siberian Traps. These eruptions spewed vast amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, drastically altering the Earth's climate. The influx of carbon dioxide led to a chain reaction. Ocean acidity levels soared and oxygen levels plummeted. Around 80% of the ocean's oxygen disappeared, creating oxygen-depleted zones, particularly in the deepest parts of the seafloor, where some areas lacked oxygen entirely. Most of marine life suffocated and perished as a result of these severe environmental changes. The Permian-Triassic extinction event fundamentally reshaped life on Earth, but the Helicoprion survived. However, its survival was short-lived, as it eventually succumbed to extinction about a million years later. Amazingly, Helicoprion shares similarities with several other fascinating animals, Ornithoprion for one. Despite existing during the Carboniferous period, it belongs to the same eugenodont order as Helicoprion. Fossils of Ornithoprion have provided scientists with valuable insights into Helicoprion's appearance beyond its distinctive spiral tooth whorls. Sarcoprion, a 20-foot-long fish from Permian Greenland, 
also possessed large tooth whorls, though more compactly arranged compared to Helicoprion. This species underscores the diversity within the Eugenodont group and offers clues to their evolutionary adaptations. Chimera, found in deep water environments in temperate seas today, are cartilaginous fishes closely related to Helicoprion. As the closest living relatives of Helicoprion, they provide crucial comparative insights into the anatomy and behavior of ancient eugenodonts. To wrap it up, although Helicoprion has long been extinct, the legend of its buzzsaw killer jaw lives on. Its unique teeth arrangement, with about 180 teeth in a spiral, remains a fascinating mystery of prehistoric marine life. The fish's ability to survive alongside other predators and adapt to changing environments tells us of its importance as a top predator back then. Furthermore, fossils found worldwide from Australia to Idaho and beyond have helped scientists understand more about its anatomy and evolution. Each discovery, from early misidentifications to later findings of cranial cartilage, has expanded our knowledge of this ancient fish. Though it eventually went extinct, likely due to major environmental changes, Helicoprion's legacy lives on in our understanding of Earth's history and biodiversity. If Helicoprion was alive today, how would its formidable buzzsaw adaptation compare with modern ocean predators? Would it dominate the seas with its unique tooth whorls, or would it face new challenges in today's marine environments? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.